Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got a very, very special guest. He goes by the name of DJ Kid Capri. The Kid! Ooh. He's here. I like he the way Kid in. Capri says it. Yeah, you, you did it. You did it. The Kid Capri! Woo! God, it's still good. Um, <laughs> He walked in a little upset because apparently there was another interview we did with Faze on Love where Rosenberg didn't know much of Kid Capri's history. Oh, it was one piece of his history ah. that I didn't know. Uh-oh. It was one piece of Hop his history please. that I I mean, you Cotton, didn't. Please. You don't start singing his ad libs on "Put It On." But first what of all, what how I, what long? Do I need to do to prove how myself? long have you been a DJ, Kid Capri? Like, talk more into the mic, kid. Three long. Three thirty years. Uh, three long. I mean, yeah, more than that. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven years. years? Something, like something like that. I haven't even been alive thirty-seven years. Yeah. Well, some suggest well, otherwise. <laughs> but, Shut up. Yeah. Uh, in your yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all went to high school together? No. Okay. But uh, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For you not to know his resume. Yeah, I, well, he said he didn't know he was on radio. Mm. But that was a it was a neat show. It was like what, eighty nine? Yeah, yeah, around that time, eighty nine. And 90. how long did it last? It wasn't that long. I really got big from the t- from the mixtapes, and that's how I got yeah. to the radio station. Why you keep going away from the mic? Yeah, you've been DJing thirty five you, years. You're under talking to a microphone. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Right. <laughs> uh, and you know, from that, it just went into TV and to other things. My album and yeah. Was no, but the radio part, you you always skip over it. Now I I never know why because that was I think it was like eighty nine to ninety one or ninety two, right? Because I know I know for a fact was it BLS or Kiss? It was BLS, BLS. but it was on at like seven o'clock in the afternoon. Seven o'clock, I was on was for that, like a, like forty five minutes. Yeah, it was half like, hour music, fifteen minutes of talk. Yeah, damn. So. Major. And like I remember, I used to work at Chicken Choice in Wontaw, Long Island. Wow. Absolutely, had that radio did. on, washing dishes in the back, and I would, I would, I would stack the dishes until six fifty, six fifty five, and I run back there and put Kid Capri on, and listen to it for half an hour. How was it? Amazing, really amazing. Like, did it feel like it's mixed? First, first time I heard, no, it was different. Yeah, different vibe. It was like it was almost party vibe. I remember when we went out. Um, First started at BLS, they had asked me to go on the, on the big public enemy tour. I think it was like 13 groups on that tour. <clears throat> and I first, I just came to the radio and they wanted me on the radio that month and the same month I had to do the tour. So what they did was they took my street tapes and had somebody edit the whole street tape and played that on the radio until I got off tour. So that was the wow. first time that ever happened. Wow. So it was that powerful. So your first week on radio was just was all, mixed tapes. my first month. It was the whole month. But you weren't even tape. on, like you I wasn't live. on the radio. It's the first time they ever did that. Took a street tape, edited it down, no matter how it sounded, mm-hmm. no matter how raw it was, they put it on the radio and that's what they rocked with until I got off the tour the next month. That's now guys, that, that, that sounds pretty impressive by Kid Capri, but that reminds me of the time when I was a senior in high school and they wanted me to DJ the Sadie Hawkins dance and they were like, listen, what can we do to get you to go? And I was like, honestly, even though I had a girlfriend out of town, I was like, I got a date this time. So I'm going with someone, sorry. They said, all right, we'll pay you and you could play a tape of your mix. <laughs> and like, that, I, got it, I got it in too, kid. Now hold on. Not the same bring, thing. Be fair though. Mm-hmm. From what you originally thought, from I guess what my tone was like on the show, and then you talk, in the two minutes we talked, you could tell that I knew much more than I led on to during that one moment. I didn't believe that. You didn't believe what? <laughs> that you knew more than what you was talking about. Did you? Do you now? Now I do. That's what I'm saying. But what, you know what? I don't blame you. Because, see, for years, I've never been the dude that, that really talk about what I do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the dude on the internet that you see me all the time. You tired of seeing me. I'm always in your face all the time, mm. bragging about what I have, showing you I have this and that. I, I did so many things in my career and helped so many people in this career, in this business. People that you see every day that's rich and mm-hmm. you see them prospering and doing good. Like Kick who? Capri, who? Ha- Kick- Jay Z. I was just about to say Diddy. Jay Z. Diddy's whole influence of music came from me, because I used to take take my records to acapellas, put the beats with them. You know, which is like for instance, the Stephanie Mills and he preached the president. Diddy got influenced by taking Mary and put it with the same type of beat. And he got on Hot 97. He said, "Kick Capri is the influence of me doing everything yeah. I did with music." So you know, these these accolades, me being a Grammy Award producer and all these different things, I never talk about because my my whole thing is the talent. When you come see me at my shows to this you day. Know. That speaks for itself. I don't really get into all the industry stuff. I turn the kick and pre light off. I know how to be David Love. You know, I don't walk around with a gang His of people. His regular, regular name I, I is still a DJ name. I know. David Love. You could have rocked with that. 
They told me that. They wanted me to be D-Love back then. But back then, you had to make up a name. Yeah. And my first name was DJ Dr. Spank, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Well, you know what? It worked out with Kid Capri. I'm going to tell you how Kid Capri came about. Okay. We used to, I used to go with a girl named Olga Carter from my, from my neighborhood. Well, we was a short two-week going with these things, but she was one of, one of our crew. And uh, we was going to class one day, and she said, Kid Capri signed a good name for a DJ. You should try it. So back then, we used to get sweatshirts, put our name on the sweatshirt, and we was out. And maybe four or five <laughs> months later. Did you have a Playboy bunny? No, nah, I had a Playboy bunny, but I had to kick a free little music note on it. But anyway, four or five months later, she was killed by a stray bullet. So oh I, ended up keeping the, I ended up keeping the name, and it took me. So Aww. it was a good name. But all the car was definitely. Wait, 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 but there's another name people call you. It pooch? Pooch, yeah. What's from the, that? That's from Kingsbridge. That's from my block. And that's like a neighborhood festival. name. Well, my, my father gave me that name. Oh. I don't know why he did that, but he gave me that name, and that's what I grew up with. You know, and then the people I went to school with, they always call me David, you know, or Mr. Lover, you know, and everybody else got when I got my little name going. Wait, where you go? Where'd you go to? Where'd you go to high school? I went to Kennedy High School. Oh God! Then went to Kennedy. Why do you say that? He lived. You no, know, Kennedy High School was official. That was the high. That was a high school when I was going. Hot sure. school in what way? That's the and school where they do the bad teach chicks the was there. Wait, wait, the where best was Kennedy teachers was there. Fordham area, Fordham Road. Uh, Kingsbridge, Broadway, 231st Street, around that way. You know, I grew up on Kingsbridge, so you know we was just in that area. But Kennedy it's the was it's high. the school with the um with the chalked out body in front of you. Oh, <laughs> oh I like that. You know that. that you know ain't that right. Mm-hmm. That well, ain't right. After that, I went to Lehman College, and then I had to quit that because like, my name got big. Thank you. Mm. So I had to get on the road. But how fun was doing Def Comedy Jam? Incredible. Yeah, remember, Def Comedy Jam started every any comedian that has a good name yeah. right now. And for the last 10, 15 years, Even 20. came through Def Comedy Jam from Cedric the Entertainer to Bernie Mac to Martin Lawrence to Jamie Foxx. We can go Chappelle, on and on. Chris Tucker. Harvey, Chris Tucker. Yep. Go on and on. And these dudes, I remember Chris Tucker was on my tour bus. We was on, we was on the Def Comedy Jam tour one time. I took my tour bus out and he got on the bus. He said, yo, kid, I've never been on a tour bus before. He said, I'm bugging right now. I can't believe I'm sitting here. And the next year, two years later, he was making twenty million dollars a show, a movie. Crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was getting paid more than him on that tour bus. Wow! When we was when he was on tour with us, it, it was like that. And then all of a sudden, in the night, just blow up. Isn't man. that sort of one of the weird things about being a DJ, though? I think it's like being a DJ and a radio personality. It's sort of similar in that. Don't get me wrong. In this field, you can have your moments where you get some good money and you do right. well. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you stay a well-to-do, regular guy. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the people you know become multi, right. multi, multi-millionaires. And a lot of times you help them. Yeah. You were a big part of it. Many, 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 many times. So do you ever feel any bitterness? or Never. Because I, I got a lot of bitterness towards Rick Ross and Rihanna. I mean, I say it openly. Say it. Be honest I mean, about I, it. What? I'm saying it. You help make their careers. Nah, I don't, I don't got no I bitterness. I anybody just... that's doing good, man. You do good. Does anybody? Did anybody ever come back and give you a brown paper bag? i tell you what. You know, I got my career started and and kept it going without asking anybody for anything. I sat on that street corner and I sold the mixtapes. I didn't know if I was going to get shot, robbed. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was on a, in the monk and mud, 145th and 8th. I was in front of Rucker on them in the middle of the night. And just to keep myself from not asking nobody for no favors or nothing like mm-hmm. that, just to get on like that. And once I did, you know, I was able to spread the love to everybody else and help them. But I've never been the type of dude to really ask nobody for anything. Even when I did my last album, Soundtrack to the Streets, I made sure Snoop got his money and Slick yeah, Rick yeah. got his money and everybody got their money. I didn't ask for no favors. Right. You know? But if you if I did, I would return the favor back in right. some kind of way. Being a DJ is so competitive. Even these these guys, we work together, but they're still competitive in their own way. Mm-hmm. When you were DJ back then, who did you have beef with? Like, who was your I, rival? My beef was nobody then. My beef is with nobody now. I heard you have beef with Funkmaster Flex. Never had beef with Flex. Flex always That's where in the street. I mean, the streets was like that. And whatever beef I did have, I, I, I'll tell you a little story, as okay. a matter of fact. And you got something to do with this. Uh-oh. I remember one time. You come with the word. Turn up. When I came back to BLS the second time, mm-hmm. I remember I got in my car. And, you know, the city was a little turned up right now because I'm back on the radio, you know, and, you know, so I'm getting all these different people calling me and all these entertainers sending me drops and stuff like that. And I remember I got in the car one time and I was on my way home and you and Flex was on the phone on a radio talking. And Flex said something. I guess he was a little nervous about what, me coming to the radio. You know, it was a little spark up. And he said something and you said, yeah, screaming all over the record. I said that? You said about that. About you? Hold up. You said that. But the funny thing was, next thing you know, everybody starts screaming all over the record. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like mm. everything else I innovate oh, wow. first. That means. Why would I say that? Because I guess at that time, what it was at that time, DJs would play the record. After the record's over, then you'll talk on the radio. 
When I was doing you, it, are you saying I was dissing you? Oh no, no, no! Listen, listen. When I was, a, yeah, you was dissing. Me. Yes, oh. yeah, you dissed me. But you, my man. But you were side. You were, you were flex. It makes sense. No, no, you. It's all right. Listen, here, here's, here's, here's the thing. So at that time, you wasn't. Nobody was talking and playing it like a mixtape. Like you play the right, music right, right. and talk over radio. It just wasn't heard of. It was radio. But then after I did it, it started happening. But I did catch you saying it. I'll, I, I just oh, well, from that little. And it's a competition thing. But it's nothing saying, wrong that with that. Piece, that little piece, I, I might, I think you might have taken it out of context because I loved when you screamed over records. So I don't remember. I might have took know, it wrong. It might have been because I like. I might have heard it wrong. Like, I might have been like, "Yo," and screaming all over those records. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I love. I, I, I didn't get it like that. How'd you I was, hear? Also, How'd you hear? Also, isn't it possible it, that in context it, you meant it as a. Like, even if it. you liked him screaming on records in the context of rocking with Flex, you're like, "Oh, and he's screaming on no, the record." I would always. Well, it made me. It made me pull over. And go check Flex. What? Yeah. Oh. It made me. It I made know. Me, it Were made you me, here when that happened? It made me go see Flex. Remember. Flex was DJing at, at Brandy's party at the W. And I remember that day I lost my, my bracelet when I walked in the W. When I went to go see Flex to tell Flex, listen, I'm on BLS. You on Hot 97. I'm shouting your name on BLS because you my man. You don't. I'm not the dude to do that with. Like, me and you, you my dude. I know. We ain't never got no competition with each other at all. When I did the doo-wop thing, that wasn't me starting that. That was doo well, starting was a great, that. That was a great beef. That was a doo-wop, great beef. Doo-wop just made a little thing, gave it to somebody. He came to me, brought me the little piece on the tape, and said, yo, I heard this kid about the diss you, put this tape out and all that. He played it for me, and that night, I had to doo-wop this out the next morning. But And, you know, it was what it was. But Flex, that's my dogs. Like So I didn't want no bad I, problem I know the beef with between him. you and Flex. It's not even beef. It's just that you were popping in the clubs and doing all this stuff, and Flex wanted to do what you were doing and, and like, looked up to you all the time yeah and flex flex even told me he was like you know he said like when you could have stopped me from playing all the clubs downtown you didn't you, ne- you never threw me a curve boy no because that's my man and that's how it is with that's anybody like, i think you know i think flex and kid capri are like um like apollo creed and rocky like that's his idol but they're also friends so he flex does want to Beat him in the DJ game, but he also admires him uh, uh, to the fullest. But that's to the good fullest. competition, and that's though. Good competition, and that's what keeps me on my game. So when I get on stage, look, anybody know, Seth? You know, I'm the humblest dude in this industry. One of the, one of them. You know, so I, I, I walk around like nothing's going on. But when I get on that stage, I'm the cockiest son of a bitch you ever met. I feel like I'm the greatest. I feel like nobody could touch me. I don't care how big your record is. I don't care how big your name is. When you get on that stage, if you're coming on after me, you better have something for the people to see. And that's how my attitude is. And after we get off the stage, I'm cool again. My boy, humble, smiling. Now you got work, you work. Everything. But when I get on that stage, I'm so focused and, and, and I want people to love me so much that I just feel like I'm, I'm the greatest. I'm sure there's a, a slew of things you can tell DJs to do. Like, what advice would you give them? What would you tell DJs not to do? Don't pick up a computer if you're really not a DJ. Yeah, good luck with that one. Yeah. That so advice you don't want them to I'm start off with Serato? I'm, I'm going to keep it funky. Keep it all around Serato. Talk on Serato. 120. You want me to keep it 120? Peace, yeah. All right. I'm going to keep it real. A lot of dudes I know that got names, I wonder how they got names. Like? There's no disrespect. I'm not going to call nobody's okay, name out, but okay. I'm going to say this. It's one thing when you have a name and you put a couple of things together and, you know, it works out successful. That's cool. But when I used to make my mixtape, what you heard me do, you seen me do. When you came to my show, it wasn't no magic trick. It was what it is what it is. So when you expect that expectation, that's what you're going to get. So a lot of times when I go to a lot of people's joints, a lot of parties and a lot of shows, I don't get that same feeling. And I'm a, I'm a fan of the music. I look at myself as if I was in this crowd watching myself and how I would want to feel if I was watching myself. I want to go crazy. Mm-hmm. And I don't get that same feeling when I go and see a lot of people because it's not really about the fans to them. It's about the glamour. Mm. It's about the bad bitches that's watching you. It's about, you know, it's about that. And, and with me, it's the poker face. It's, it's how can I be eight steps ahead to make these people want to pay a ticket to come back and see me again? Because it's more than a ticket. They got to buy clothes to come see me. They got to get fresh. They got to get a ride. They got to buy drinks when they get in. Get hair they pay done, for a nails, ticket. Yeah. They meet somebody, buy them a drink. And they doing all this shit because you're there. It's for you. You kick a freeze in town. So how do you not give them the best you can give them? You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, these artists go out on the road. And, they, you know, something happens like rain happened. Crowd don't come. 
So now they got their money. They leave the crowd. They leave the promoter there stuck. No crowd there. They want their money. I got my money. I'm here. I don't care about no crowd. And they go. I don't do that to my promoters. When that, when something like that happens, it's not my fault. Work but I them. make sure my promoters, I tell them, set up another joint. I'll come back and do it for free. Don't even worry about it. And you keep that relationship. Right. You keep that that good karma. You keep that that. You keep that thing that's missing from everybody else. Yeah, that's you know the key to longevity. That's, that's what, why that's you what had it is. That you success. take the downs like you take yeah. the ups. And every day is not going to be a sunshine day. So you got to take the rain with it. So And that's how that's how I look at it. And that's why the business keep going. That's why I'm able to keep moving without being on radio, without being having no television, no well, record. Well, and the name Kid Capri <laughs> keeps moving. Yeah. Funny you should mention that because Kid Capri does have a TV show. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it starts Monday, April 1st. The second joint. Comes on at, what, 10 p.m.? 10 p.m. VH1. VH1. We was on BET for two seasons if you missed it. But there were two good seasons, 3.5 million viewers. Incredible seasons. Um, My man DJ Scratch won the first season. DJ P won the second season. $250,000 to each one of them. Twenty and fifty thousand. Oh yeah, we pay a lot of straight money. DJ content. Where you at, Saif? Yeah. You yeah. didn't even know. Yeah. I'm getting in there. And it's Smyrnoff. Smyrnoff's behind it. You know, Smyrnoff's the number one rock in the world, so they have big, big chip. They didn't. No one. No one asked us to. Yeah. No, nobody would ask us. We would have been a funny tandem. Now you have like real. You have to have real DJ skills on this show. You got to. When I'm gonna tell you this, when you see this show this season, a lot of DJs are gonna have to take it up. They're gonna have to take it up a, a big, big notch because it, it's becoming something else now. It's becoming. In my lane, what I do, I'm gonna stick to what I do. I don't do no trickery. No, I'm stay right there. But right. for what they're doing, you got to be able to set your bar above that because mm. they taking it they somewhere else. And now you seen it on television. It ain't like it's something. You know, a lot of times you don't get the DJ to get the full vibe of a DJ because right. you can't clear the music. But Smirnoff got so much paper that they could clear anything. They so cleared the, oh, so the music on there the first too. Season. Wow. Yeah, the music's all over it. You got all the music you want. We got all the music we want. We do what we want, and you're gonna see something else special too. In the last, the last, I'm gonna tell you this. You're gonna see something real special in the last episode. I think you need to do an episode where you teach these DJs or the DJs' partners or friends that's with them to carry crates. Okay, because that's a lost we art. We did that in the second. <laughs> you did do that? We did that in the second season. We went down these city steps. We had these long city steps. We took these crates and put them on the bottom of the city steps. The crates of vinyl. The last three DJs, we made them run up the steps with the, with the crate. Thank you. We had to run up well the steps, done. come back downstairs, get another crate, run back up steps, come back down, get another crate, and run back up steps. Because And then they had to sleep on the tour bus. It was like a whole bunch of them all over the floor on the tour bus. The whole idea was the that we're going to bring it. you down a notch. And show you what it is to grind to, to become a name DJ. Word. But they know that's gonna be temporary because now it's Serato. So right, oh, but I bring I bring I bring cinder blocks with me in my truck and <laughs> make my interns carry them just cause.